Hi, this is Scott Stoddard. I'm a solution architect for HP on our page wide web press business. And as you can tell from this video, we've been touring American Litho today. And it all started with American Litho on this journey with us about a year ago uh, when they installed their T340 HD that's over here. This press was configured for direct mail applications. You get an inline priming unit, an inline postcoder, and just been a workhorse for them. As you've heard on the tour, they've been growing and have been expanding and have recently added the T250 which is the next generation on this platform. So what we're gonna to do today, is we're gonna take a little bit deeper dive into the T250. We're gonna go step-by-step step through the press. And I'll be able to explain everything to you. So the first stop on our virtual tour here on the T250 is at, it, at the unwinder. And this is where it all begins. Um, when it comes to unwinders here at American Litho, they chose with, to go with EMT, but we work with a number of different partners, including full auto splicing capabilities and splice detection with ConnieWeb. When it comes to the paper, it's web, web rolls, three, five inch cores, no problem. Web can be eight inches wide, up to 22 inches wide. And when it comes to basis weights, it can be anywhere from a 40 GSM to 250 GSM, or for people like myself, 27 pounds, all the way up to 10 points. And that's what you can do your your insert, your insert application, all the way up to postcards. So a wide variety of papers, coated, uncoated, gloss, dull, matte, um, and whatever paper is needed for your, your application, it all starts here at the Unwinder. So here we are at the press. Here we're at the Page Wide Web Press T250 HD. And this is a duplex press, so we're printing side one in this arch. We're drying the paper. We'll come around, we print side two. We dry it and it exits out through the top. And this particular press has our optional dryer expansion module, giving you an additional 25% drying capacity for those heavy coverage coated media jobs. Let's talk a little bit about the print area for the set for a moment. So on both print arches, we have a number of different print bars. The first print bar you're gonna encounter is our optimizer. Optimizer is a pre-treatment we can put on untreated paper coated or uncoated paper, dot for dot where ink is going to go to give us better ink holdout so that the media loves our ink. After we lay down optimizer, we have two black print bars, two cyan magenta print bars, and a yellow print bar. This open space is, is open uh, for optional micers. Here at American Litho, they didn't need micers. This press utilizes our HP thermal inkjet technology. This is what the print heads look like in this press. HP Thermal Inkjet Technology. There are five of these on each print bar staggered across the press. On each print head, there are five dies staggered across. These print heads have a native resolution of 2,400 nozzles per inch. Each print head has four times nozzle redundancy. So in the case of black having two print bars, we actually have eight times nozzle redundancy, four times in CMY. What that means to you is there are no jet outs in your prints. But that 2400 nozzle per inch resolution is now comparable to what you might be getting on a plate setter. So now with digital printing, we now have that resolution. Here in American Litho, as you heard, they have a number of offset presses and they mix work based upon the, the needs of the job. The print heads are actually a consumable on this press. User replaceable in less than five minutes, making sure that you have the optimum uptime. This is a consumable that's included in your cost per page, as is the web wipe cassette, which is an automatic mechanism that wipes the print heads before you start printing and after you start printing as well. HP page wide web presses include user replaceable cassettes that wipe the print heads and absorb ink ejected from spitting and drop detection. During a service cycle, the cassette advances from a supply roll to a take-up roll, providing fresh material while in contact with the nozzles. The cartridge is designed for hundreds of wipe cycles, and the printer's user interface notifies the operator when the web has been consumed. Print heads are capped when not printing, making sure that they're ready to use for the next, next time you need to run the press. This also prints in two different print modes. We have a performance mode that prints at 1,200 nozzles per inch, runs at 500 feet per minute. We also have a quality mode that prints at 2,400 nozzles per inch, 
at 250 feet a minute. We have the flexibility now with our brilliant inks, not just to print on any paper, but also expand that color gamut, being able to meet and exceed G7 standards for gray balance and also for grackle color space as well. So here we are at the operator console of the press. Here's how you control the press. We have a graphical user interface, all touchscreen controlled. You can control the press from here, or it also comes with a remote workstation that you can put down by your finishing line. You've got a touchscreen graphic user interface, it tells the operator everything that's about to going on with the press. Right now it's running at 450 feet a minute in performance mode. The press also has quick vision. Quick vision is continuously monitoring the quality of the, of the job looking for any missing ink. Should there be any missing ink, it's going to alert the operator on what frame, what area, on what side of the press. It's also going to flash on the tree light that there's an error, letting the operator know to take a look and look at the quality of the work. Very important when you're in a roll-to-roll -roll workflow like we have here. This press is also equipped with color calibration. That allows us to linearize the press to the paper we have loaded. Not only does it linearize to the paper, but it makes sure that side one matches side two, and press number one matches press number two. Next item beyond the vision system and operator console is a moisturizer. If you think about what we've been doing to the web, we've been putting ink on paper, we've been over drying it, we did it again. The moisture content of the paper is gonna be tight once it comes out of those dryers. The moisturizer puts moisture back into the paper so it's not tight. So when you sheet it, it lays flat. Finally, here at the end, we've got the rewinder taking everything up. And as you saw earlier in the tour, all these rolls are making it out to the MBO finishing line. Supplying the press with ink is done through our remote ink transfer station. This is sending ink to the ink delivery system that's on press, replenishing it as necessary. This station can be up to 100 meters away from the press, and this can support multiple presses, up to three presses. As you can see here, we have a drum each of cyan, magenta, yellow, and black, and also a drum of our HP optimizer. Drums are 200 liters each and are hot swappable, meaning you can change these out as they go empty and the press will continue to run as it's running off of its local supply. Another key feature to keeping the press running nonstop is our compute stack. In the compute stack is the press electronics and our digital front end. Our digital front end consists of a Hewlett Packard Enterprise server, that has hundreds of RIP instances running. It is scaled based upon the type of work you do to make sure that the digital front end outruns the press. You can send this either PDF or JDF, and you can utilize a hot folder workflow or send XML directly to it. So while we're here at American Litho, I did want to spend some time on their T240 before it's upgraded to a T250. One thing that they have here is they have a Harrison Bruno post coder in line with their press. This allows them to apply either an aqueous or UV coating if the job requires it. This runs in line with the press at the full speed of the press. And like the press, it's also designed to be upgraded as we come out with new features. The way this unit operates is it has quick change sleeves for both the Analux rollers and the transfer rollers. It has separate systems for UV and aqueous. Down in the bottom section is where the coating takes place. You can watch it through the inspection window on the front. And this is the drying unit. It has drying for both the aqueous and the UV at the top. It exits and heads on out to the rewinder. Hey, Sam, how's it going? Hey, how are you? Good to see you, man. Hey, um, now that you get the T250, can you tell me some of the difference between the T250 and the T240? Sure, sure. So uh, one of my favorite is the uh, color vision system. So it allows me to see the job in color now uh, compared to the black and white with the T240 version. Awesome. So, and then uh, we have the uh, Brilliant Ink that uh, is made for this press. Gives us uh, a bigger color gamut so we can achieve, you know, some of these deeper, vibrant reds and blues. So, awesome. awesome. How long did it take you to learn the differences? 
Uh, about two days. Two days? Yeah, two days. Awesome. Awesome. Well, good luck, man. Thank you. Thanks. I want to thank you for the time today and the quick tour that we had here at American Litho and look forward to, to talking with you in the future.